I'm here in Horsham District Community Radio. Um, we had Raising Ravens, It's a Trap, and that track that we just heard is by Simon York. She wrote on Seven Sheets of Paper, and we have Simon on the phone to talk about that and a little bit more. So um, you're saying that's a collaboration with a, a violinist, Simon? Yes, mate, yes. Uh, I was living in, in uh, Latvia in 2007. Uh, I was gigging a lot in Europe, and my wife was born in Latvia, so it was a very convenient place to live. And uh, I was doing an album in those days called Cream for the Soul, and I hired a lot of the local musicians, one of whom was uh, Marguerite Crane, and they were all from the, uh, the orchestra there. And uh, we sort of uh, lost track a little bit um, over the years, but we kept in touch. And she moved to the US, where she lives now with a husband and two children. And uh, when I wrote the song, I was sort of agonising how, how, to, how to make the song work. And, and I kept hearing a violin in my imagination. And I sent her a line and said, you know, would you like to play uh, as a as feature artist, guest artist on the song? And she, she immediately said yes. So she recorded part in uh, where she lives at home and sent me the part, uh, uh, what she recorded, and I mixed it in. And I'm just really, really pleased how it came out, you know, because it, it lifted the song to a whole new emotional level for me anyway, and I hope it does for, <laughs> for my listener. Yeah, now, um, I mentioned to you that it has a sort of Spanishy feel to it. Yeah, um, right. And I noticed Thank that you. your genre is blues, jazz, Christian and Latin. Um, yeah, yeah, those, those, among among the many. <laughs> yep. um, did you have a, a sort of Spanish background, or do, is there a Spanish influence in you? No, no, none whatsoever, none that I'm aware of. Uh, but for some reason, I really connected with with uh, Latin music and Spanish music when I was a, a youngster, as a teenager. I was particularly fascinated with Paco de Lucia, Lucia who was a, a flamenco guitarist. Um, and of course the Santanas and the Osabisa and I was always drawn to the congas and timbales, you know, those percussive instruments. My older brother was right into the, uh, you know, the, the Brazilian artists and, uh, you know, um, the, the Latin, it just, just very contagious, it's very contagious music. And when I was living in the Spanish Canary Islands, I was performing with musicians, yeah, Cuban percussionists from Cuba, and uh, Spanish musicians, and I just love the Latin rhythms, and uh, it sort of infused a little bit into, into my uh, influences, I think. But I grew up loving the blues as well. I, 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 I was born near Byron Bay, you know, where they had the blues festival, um, and I loved my blues. I love, uh, I, you know, uh, I saw the movie Woodstock when I was 13 and just fell in love with that guitar thing, you know, and... Uh, uh, you know, the great guitarists that were playing at Woodstock, the Hendrix and the Alvin Lees and, you know, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Cool. Um, now, I've got to ask, what's the song actually about from your perspective? About, you you wrote it, so... Yeah, it's about... Um, and my, life, my wife helped out with the lyrics. Um, yeah, it's about that, the broken heart. You know, how do you deal with a broken heart? You know, um, what do you do? Uh, and there's, as I said, in, you know, before, it's uh, there's something about the healing process that's very courageous. You know, you've got to just get up and go on. And that's the song says. You know, she traded futures and commodities. Uh, you know, she's a woman of, um, of of the stock market, a woman of business, a woman of agriculture. She she planted trees beside a vineyard. You know, uh, mm -hmm. she walked beside the sea. So you know, she's a woman of simplicity, a woman of uh, agriculture, a woman, a woman of business. Uh, uh, so she walks beside the sea, she, she does business, she gets up and she goes on. She rides a bicycle to market and buys macarons and tea. <laughs> I like that line, you know, it's just those little things. What do you do when you've got a broken heart? Well, you just, you just go on, you, you, you live simply, you, you, you keep doing business, you keep doing what you have to do to survive. And in, um, in some ways it's almost a, a love song for the last 18 months, isn't it? Yeah, because that's what yeah. we've had to do. We've sort of had to carry on with, um, you know, being locked up and not being locked up, and trying to have a life and and a, and a functionality of well, you know. Yeah. I, th I think in some ways, you know, not taking away from your beautiful song, but um, I think a lot of us have had our hearts broken with with the way our governments behaved and treated us, and we've been locked away. And oh yeah, yeah. So I, I really like it for that. How do you come up with? 
songs? Like, do you? Do, I, I every artist I interview, I ask this question: How do you create your songs? Do you? Does a lyric come to mind? Does you see a picture of something? Um, I, I think it starts with a feeling. Uh, even if you're not conscious of that feeling, it starts with a feeling. Um, there's something about the songwriting process that's very mysterious. Uh, but then there's another aspect of the songwriting process that's very practical. You know, you have to sit down with a pencil and paper and you have to put something... Uh, if you focus too much on the mysterious, <laughs> you, you never get anything done. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so you have to you have to sit down and, and, and decide what you want to do. Okay, first of all, I try to write... Usually I start with the harmonic progression, the chords. I, 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 I write down onto a piece of paper the chords that, that go into a progression, a, a, a sequence... That, that does something, that conveys the emotion, the feelings that I'm feeling at the time. And then the lyrics usually fit uh, to that. Uh, but, but it is extraordinary. I, I, I have been telling the story about the song Welcome the Sun. When I was 19 years old, back in the Dark Ages, <laughs> in the medieval period, <laughs> I wrote that song Welcome the Sun, and in a moment of time, the chords and the melody came to me straight away. And just one line, welcome the sun through the early morning haze, where summer beaches smile and children play. And that song lay dormant for decades until uh, in 2013, I sat down and all of the lyrics just came to me in, a, in about 15 minutes. So there's something strange, something mysterious about the songwriting process. It just sort of, I don't know how to explain that. I'm not a psychologist, but maybe all those lines and all those uh, lyrical ideas just build up inside you and just one day they kind of spew out. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, <laughs> I spoke to uh, one of the guys from a band called Big Marino. They're based in Sydney. Um, mm -hmm. And they've got a really cool song uh, called Black Clocker 2. And I asked them, and it's actually about depression, and, and um, one of the things I have with black cockatoos fly over my uh, property when they're migrating here at Horsham. So it resonated with me, the, the sound yeah. of the song. And apparently it just came about because the, the um, lead, lead songwriter on that song um, loves black cockatoos, and he tried to work out how he could work that into a song about depression. And it, it, yeah, um, it's worth a listen to. I've played it a few times here. I've probably have to put it to rest for a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, um, when you think of a, a, a bird, you know, you think of um, you know the 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 So I don't. I have a very binary mind because my background prior to uh, my injuries was policing. So I had this very binary yes and no. Did you do something wrong? No, leave you alone. Yeah. Did, did, right, so I, I don't have this creative flair, and I'm in awe of anybody who has the, the creative flair that you and, and every other artist I play has. Um, it's just uh, I would love to be able to do that. I would love to be able to. It's almost. Um, uh, being a poet, isn't it? It's, it's sort of mm. poetry with music. Well, they say um, that it has to do with the different hemispheres of the brain. You know, uh, if you're really good with, with uh, uh, like, numbers and logic, and like, uh, to be an architect or a mathematician, you operate on the left-hand side of the brain that deals with, you know, things like organisation and... Uh, uh, you know, you might be an events organiser or something like that, and 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 logic and logistics uh, is a left brain thing, and they say creativity is more of a right brain thing. And uh, uh, the corp, uh, you know, there's a the creativity uh, rely. And I found this about myself. Um, if if I get into a creative mode in a day, if I set aside Monday for songwriting or music. I find something happens to me, there's a kind of fog that comes over my left brain, mm -hmm. and it's very difficult me, for me to pick up a phone and, and, and talk to someone about things that are going on, or to, to do the books, or to do the, do the accounting, or to write invoices. It's sort of something happens, and, 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 and it's like the left part of my brain <laughs> goes into a kind of a fog. So if I wake up in the morning and I think, right, I've got to do, I've got to do the tax today, or I've got to do the numbers, you know, I deliberately, I have learned 
not to touch the piano for that day because the two things for me don't mix. Oh, cool. Now, do you have a day gig or is music your your uh, day gig? Up until COVID, I was playing 25 years full-time, sometimes six nights a week. Uh, I worked out I did something like 5,000 gigs <laughs> oh, wow. in, two, in 20 years. Um, and, and, you know, I was gigging all over. My wife and I were living in, on four of the Caribbean islands. Uh, we were living in Europe. And uh, here in Australia, I was gigging, you know, in the, the sort of hot spots. You know, but each winter I'd go to the snow, you know, up to the Threadbow Gym to buy and do six nights a week there. And uh, just before COVID, I was playing one night uh, in a big gig. Uh, I was, fortunately, I wasn't the front man that night. I was just playing piano for another singer. And... Um, uh, we were in rehearsals just before the gig, and uh, I froze. I went into a complete... Uh, I, I, I just froze. I couldn't play, I couldn't talk, I couldn't... And I had a complete breakdown. And shortly after that, I had some uh, health issues. I had a heart attack and <laughs> all that oh, stuff. Wow. So COVID was actually a blessing in disguise for me in that um, I really needed time to rest and recover and i was just pushing myself too hard mate i was just well you're really... not you're not 19 anymore simon i, I don't know if anyone's no, told you that no <laughs> and uh, i had had i had had i do have some post-traumatic stress issues and i was sort of hiding those in my music and uh, uh and, and just the uh the opportunity so when i started writing this album i i i, I started i thought it was going to be a really depressing blues album <laughs> The one, um, as I said, she wrote on seven sheets of paper. I think it's uh, almost a love song and a, and mm. a love song for this lady who's continuing to to move through life with a broken heart. But also, I think a love song for the for the generation or this particular time of life. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're gonna yeah, yeah. we're gonna finish up, and I want to. Yes, I am gonna play one more of your songs called "Every Song." Now your album. Before we go, the album's called "Yesterday's Summer." Yes. Why yesterday's summer? <laughs> my wife um, suggested the name to me. Uh, she knows my very very deep affection for the ocean. I grew up in a small seaside town. I love swimming, and. Uh, the idea is nostalgia. Uh, that first summer when you're out of high school, you're surfing, you know, you're going swimming, and 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 you and I, we've grown up in a country where we have that privilege, um, you know, yep. and just the, just that feeling of carefreeness, not having to worry about work or bills, <laughs> you know. Uh, so there's that sort of nostalgia in there. It's like that first summer. Um, you know, that, that summer that you had where you had no responsibility, no cares, you just, all you had to do was have fun. <laughs> and that's, um, yeah, for me, that's what that represents. Cool. And, uh, you know, that, that feeling of carefreeness and just, just enjoying the beautiful sunshine and, and, and life. All right. Now, tell us a little bit about every song before I play it. Um, every song you sing. Uh, yeah, uh, my wife and I were having breakfast on the balcony one morning and she said something to me, you know, you're this and I'm that. And I don't even remember what it was she said, but it, it just... Um, the lyric sort of, you'll notice that, you know, I've got the hill, you've got the view, you know, I've got the the bill, you, you, you know, you've got the debt, I've got the bill. It sort of plays with that kind of um, idea of you've got something and I've got something else. We bounce off each other and we love each other and that's the fun of it and that's the beauty of love, that's the beauty of a relationship. And uh, so it's, it's meant to sort of convey just the fun of love, uh, the fun of and, and, and the, the, the dependency that you have on each other, that, the, that, that love, uh, love affords you, you know, that, that beautifulness of you've got a strength, I've got a weakness, and you've got a weakness, and I've got a strength, you know. And Mate, you're, making, maybe, you're, you're making me feel a little redundant. I mean, you write love songs for your wife. I brought my wife a battery-powered chainsaw. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you've got, you've got, you do things that I don't do, mate. You yeah. know, I'm... I, I'm, I'm um, uh, you know, there's there's certain areas, there's things I can't do. <laughs> one, and one of the yeah, and one of the cool things I like about the theme of that song is 
um, we should stop comparing ourselves to other people because everybody has unique talents. Like you do all this beautiful songwriting, you're a beautiful artist and you play gorgeous music. Um, I mean, yes, I think that's what I was trying to say. It's yeah. not just in love. It's not, it's not just love. It's, it's all our relationships. So yeah. We have that, you know, that thing. Yeah, sorry to interrupt. Go no, on. That's right, but I, I'm a mental health counsellor who helps people coming back from that, you know, dark blues area. Um, yeah. And, you know, I apparently have fallen into something I'm really good at. So it's... Um, we're, we're all good at something, and I think the, the I have a quote up on my in my office for my clients is that um, when you uh, when you stop comparing, you'll stop competing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and we just need to accept that you have this, you I have this. We're all really cool people. Um, yes, yes, absolutely. And I, I suspect you're a, you're a man of empathy. You have a, an ability to to uh, you know empathise with what people are going through. Yeah, um, gets me into mm. trouble sometimes, but yeah. Well, it's, a, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a, it's a good thing, mate. It's a very, very yeah. uh, important and necessary thing in society, in the world, you know. Uh, you know, Especially now, you know, I, I try to mentor a lot of young musicians and, and I just love encouraging these young artists that are coming up. And, you know, it's, it's, it's been a dark time this year and, and people need encouragement. We need each other. We need... Uh, you know, each other's abilities and, and, and strengths. Absolutely. All right, we're going to finish up now. I know you've moved not too far from Horsham. I'm not going to say where. Um, <laughs> but if you're ever travelling through Horsham, make sure you you drop us a line and let us know and um, we might even get you and your guitar in the studio. That'd be awesome, mate. Love to. Yeah, well, just let us know uh, when we're allowed to move around. All right, folks, that's yeah. Simon York. Stay on the phone, Simon, because I'll do the intro and then I'll have a quick chat to you before we go. Uh, and this is Simon's... Simon's, oh God, I'm tongue-tied now, Simon's song, 